I have been living in an RV for seven years in some pretty remote places all by myself. And lately I've seen a practice that some full-time RVers and nomads are doing that just scares the heck out of me. I think this practice, and I've seen solo female nomads do it. I think this could be dangerous and even deadly. So I'm gonna tell you what it is today and tell you what you can do to protect yourself. So I wanna walk you through a scenario. You're inside your rig, maybe you're sleeping, maybe it's after dark, maybe it's not. Maybe it's broad daylight and you're working or cleaning or cooking dinner or whatever. You get a knock on the door. Hello? You look out and you see an official looking white truck or just a white truck. There's white trucks everywhere and most fleet trucks are white trucks, true story. And you see someone in uniform and they're knocking on your door. Someone called in your license plate and we're here to do a wellness check. No, I'm fine. Everything is okay. Someone said they heard someone in distress. And they're like, Carolyn, Carolyn, Carolyn Higgins. And you're like, how do they know my name, right? That's the first thing you're like, okay, he's in a uniform, he knows my name, and they're saying that they want to do a wellness check. No, I'm okay. There was no distress here. I'm fine. Okay, ma'am, but we need to see you. Can you please step out of the vehicle? We need to make sure you're okay. But no, I'm fine. Your name is Carolyn Higgins, right? What do you do in a situation like that, right? Because the first thing that's going through your mind is they must be official because they know my name. He said they ran the license plate, so they wanted, they knew my name and they want to verify my identity and they want to make sure I'm okay. Sounds legit, right? Is it legit? How else would they know your name? I'm going to tell you how they know your name and the mistake you might be making that could put your life in jeopardy. Please come out of the vehicle, ma'am, so we can make sure you're okay. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So where the heck did I go wrong in this scenario? How the heck did this predator know my first and my last name? Any guesses? No, they didn't run my license plate. Any guesses as to how this predator knew my name? It's as simple as this, my cell phone, also used as my mobile hotspot. More and more nomads are relying on their cell phones, a mobile hotspot, and Starlink to stay connected while they're in very, very remote places. And oftentimes, or more and more, I'm finding it easier for these devices to allow you to give your network a custom name. It used to be really hard and kind of techy to go in and figure out how to change the name of your network. And if you don't know what that is, it's how you find your device when you're logging in on your computer to log on to your mobile hotspot. Usually, it comes pre populated with the name of your de your device Verizon A75 Verizon Galaxy Samsung AT&T uh uh, iPhone or whatever, but they're making it easier than ever for you to just go in. It's just another feature and make your network name whatever you want it to be. And what that means is that your network is going to be findable anyone within your area. So when they switch on Wi-Fi and you search for a network, yours is going to show up. And I can't tell you how many times in the last year I have seen Melanie's hotspot, Jane's hotspot, Sadie's hotspot. Recently, I saw someone, uh, uh, Mary Jones hotspot. Mm-hmm. Samantha B. Hotspot. <laughs> I actually saw someone use their first and their last name as their network name. Don't do this. This is danger. It's literally sending out a beacon saying, I'm a solo female in here. I camped somewhere recently where no one was within a mile and a half of me. If I named my Starlink or if I changed the name of my network on my hotspot, 
on my cell phone to Carolyn Higgins Wi-Fi and somebody spent a couple hours looking at my RV from a vantage point. I didn't even know they were there. It wouldn't take long to figure out I'm alone. You are sending a beacon to anybody who is within range that you are a female and if you're alone, it's very easy to figure out you're a female traveling alone and you're setting yourself up for predators. Now, you know me, if you've been watching me for a while, I am not one to fear monger. I've been living on the road seven years by myself and I've never had anything bad happen to me. Of course, I've had to use my gut, my head, and I've had to use my gut a couple of times to get out of potentially what could have been very potential dangerous situations. And the one that comes to mind always is the guy on the Trail of Tears in British Columbia. I think I really dodged a bullet on that one. But being smart, using your head, and listening to your gut go hand in hand, using your brain to not make yourself a target to potential predators or to someone who just might be a uh, somebody who just wants to cause trouble and seize an opportunity. You know what I mean? So please women, especially women, go in right now. If you have named your network after you, don't do it. Change it. Oh my gosh, I just, if you're out in the middle of nowhere by yourself, why would you want to broadcast that you're by yourself and that you're a woman? Women are are uh, more vulnerable out here alone, that's for sure. Like I said, I mean, it's not that it's, it's, this is a scary, dangerous place. It's not like there's predators around every corner, but why would you want to make it easier just in case one happens to come out here? And again, I think it's po po perfectly safe out here, but again, it's perfectly safe as long as you use your head and listen to your gut. And when you make choices that put your gut in harder circumstances, you know, where you have to make difficult choices or you have to make choices, whatever, you know, leave your, leave your gut out of it. <laughs> Let your gut rest. Just use your head so that you don't have to go there. So that you don't have to potentially put yourself in a dangerous situation. So really all it takes is for anyone to switch their phone to Wi-Fi. It's going to bring up all of the available networks in my area. So you can do it on your laptop, you can do it on your hotspot, you can do it on your iPad, you can do it on your cell phone. All you have to do is turn on Wi-Fi and search for a network to see the names of the network around you. And if Samantha Jones, I keep using comedians or actors and actresses, if Samantha Jones comes up, they're gonna know that there's a woman around. And if they, if you're the only one around and you're not buried too deep in the woods, it wouldn't be too hard to find you and it wouldn't be too hard to figure out you're by yourself. So do me a favor, do not name your network after you. Do not give it a feminine name. Give it something hardcore. You don't want to, don't do NRA or anything related to that because uh, I learned this early on from someone who'd been on the road a while. That can make you a different kind of a target for thieves who might want to break in and steal your GUNs. So you don't want to do that either. I'm Satan's Den or I Eat People <laughs> or something like that. You know, make it something uh, a little scarier, at least intimidating that's going to make people think twice about coming to mess with you. The other thing that I did think about when I was uh, planning this video is that maybe these women used pseudonyms. Maybe they're not their real names. Maybe Sarah Jones named her network Mary Taylor. And that could also, there could be an argument made that that is also a safety thing because then if law enforcement comes on your road, um, comes knocking on your door and they're looking for Sam Jones, but your name is Mary Taylor, you instantly, your spidey said, you instantly know, okay, they got the name from my from my variety, from my uh, my network, and this is not really law enforcement. So it could also work that way. You could put a fake name on it, but why invite anybody to come? Why? Don't put a female name. Don't put a female name. We all know females are more vulnerable solo on the road than men are. It's a fact of life. 
this doesn't make me a man hater doesn't make me anything other than a realist <laughs> and someone who knows facts women are more vulnerable alone period okay so I would just stay away from using your name and if you don't know how to change your network name, go ahead and Google it for whatever device you and have. And do me a favor, if you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Just click the button below and click the bell for notifications so you never miss anything. And even if you've been with me for a while, please double check to make sure you're still subscribed to my channel because YouTube does unsubscribe people. So thank you all so much for being here. Be safe, be happy, be free, and be kind. And I'll see you soon.